Welcome. The purpose of this video is to show you how to build a custom Embedded Linux Board Support Package, or BSP for short, using TimeSys's Linux Link Web-based Quick Start Edition. Before I show you how to build your custom board support package, I want to give you a quick overview of the steps you'll take to assemble your BSP and matching software development kit. This overview is meant to show you the features of our web-based UI so that you'll be familiar with the process. Next, I'll show you how to do it. I'll log into Linux Link and walk you through the process online. And finally, I'll wrap things up with an explanation of the build output and download files so that you'll see what you'll get and understand how Linux Link has packaged your BSP and matching SDK. Let me start by saying that as we go forward in this overview, the menu at the top of this page, Project, Work Order, etc., is the same menu that you'll see in the Linux Link Web UI. You'll see it when we switch over to the online demo. The first step to creating your custom BSP is to create a project. Your project can define a product for which you evaluate specific hardware. For example, a home automation device. A project is a container to hold your work orders. I'll explain the concept of a work order in the next slide. A project is a container where you can define multiple versions of the same BSP. For example, you can have the same BSP with different versions of APIs. You can have as many projects as necessary, and each project can contain as many work orders as you need. A project is associated with a specific reference board, so at this step, you'll be asked to select a reference board. At this step, you'll also be asked to select your application, such as multimedia, industrial controller, networking device, etc. Selecting your application at this step will help TimeSys assist you with your choices. Next, you'll create a work order. I didn't label this as step two because it's a continuation of the project you've just created. Okay, so you're probably asking, what is a work order? As we navigate through the steps, we'll be selecting a kernel, toolchain, and packages. And all of this information will be stored in a flat text file that we call the work order. Simply put, a work order defines all the Linux components that are in the final functional product, which in this case will be a board support package and matching software development kit. The work order is a very powerful concept because at any time, you'll be able to rebuild your board support package from the ground up by having just that single text file. Again, you can have multiple work orders per project, with each work order describing a specific board support package. In step two, you'll select a Linux kernel. Typically, you'll be presented with more than one kernel version from which to choose. Depending on your requirements, you can go with any one of the kernel versions presented. We don't lock you into a specific kernel version. At this step, you can inspect the device drivers enabled for each kernel version, and if you are a kernel developer, you can access and download the kernel configuration files. Next, you'll select a toolchain. You can choose from either UCLibc or GLibc toolchains. You'll see that TimeSys makes toolchain recommendations. Or, if you prefer, you can customize your own. In addition to the most recent toolchains, TimeSys also maintains older ones. This ensures build repeatability. In step four, you'll select packages or APIs from the more than 1,000 packages in the Linux Link repository. As you'll see in a few minutes, at this step, you can get detailed information about a package by clicking on the package name. You can use Smart Search to search for a package without knowing the package name. And if you have a Linux Link subscription, you can also modify the build configuration of a package. In step five, you'll select your build output options. First, you'll be presented with root file system file format options, including tar, JFFS2, or initRAMFS, and you can select file system footprint optimization options, such as stripping all libraries and binaries in the RFS, removing all static files, and more. And finally, at this step, you can select the output format type for the individual package binaries. Based on the selections you've made throughout the entire process, the factory advice engine will identify any conflicts and make recommendations. The recommendations which the advice engine makes are based on build and run dependency, as well as on logic dependency. You have the option of choosing to accept these recommendations, or you can proceed with the selections you've made. 
And finally, you'll have an opportunity to review all of your selections in the work order summary. On this page, you'll be able to view detailed information for any of the components you've chosen, and you can modify any of your selections. On this page, you'll also find the estimated build time for your custom board support package and matching software development kit. And when you're all finished reviewing your work order, you'll initiate the final build process. So now that you've seen the steps we'll be taking, let me show you how easy and fast it really is to build your custom board support package and matching software development kit using the Linux Link Web UI. Using your account, username, and password, log in to Linux Link. The easiest way to log in is to go to timesys.com and click on the login link at the top of the page. If you don't have an account and would like to register for a free account, you can do so at timesys.com slash register or by clicking on free edition in the timesys.com menu. Once logged in, you'll be taken to your dashboard page, which will contain links to important resources. You'll see your name at the top of the page, along with the team to which you are assigned, and you'll see the processor for which you have an account. Now, typically, those who register for the free edition will have access to only one processor. You're seeing three on my dashboard page because I have access to multiple processors for demo purposes. Earlier, I explained that each of your individual builds is defined in a work order. Well, if you have any recent work orders, each time you log into Linux Link, you'll see them at the top of this page, along with the status and the download links. For the purpose of this demo, we'll proceed as though we are creating our first custom board support package and matching software development kit. So to begin, we can click on either the Build Custom BSP SDK button in the left panel, or we can select Build BSP SDK in the main navigation. So as we navigate through each of the steps, you'll see that building your custom board support package is as easy to do as I've outlined for you. First, I'm going to create a project. I'll create a project and associate it with a reference platform and with a product name. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to go ahead and pick the TI AM3517 EVM. Next, I have the option of selecting the type of device I am designing, which will help in making recommendations. At this point, you don't have to select anything if you don't want to. Next, I'll create a work order. Again, the work order is going to define the board support package I'm building. At this step, if I have a previous work order, I can select it, I can copy it, and I can upload a work order. I'll go ahead and select Create a Work Order. I'll give my work order a name and type in a brief description. Now I'm prompted to select a Linux kernel. As I mentioned earlier, in most cases, you'll have multiple kernel versions from which to choose. To see the device drivers enabled for any of the kernels, simply click on the kernel name. For this particular kernel that I've selected, you can see that audio, CAN bus, Ethernet, and so forth are all enabled. You can also see the version and revision number, as well as estimated build time, install size, and license information. And if you are a kernel developer and you have a Linux Link subscription, the .config link to download the kernel configuration file will be enabled. This will allow you to inspect the options as they are configured for the Linux kernel. Note that I can select the previous and next buttons to navigate my way through building my custom BSP, or I can choose to use the navigation items in the wizard. In this next step, I can select a cross tool chain. I see that I have several toolchain options from which to choose. And as you can see, TimeSys is recommending either a small footprint UCLibc library or a standard glibc library. These recommendations are based on a specific reference platform, so if you don't have any requirements relating to the toolchain, we will always provide recommendations for you. And we guarantee the builds will be optimized for the architecture and reference platform with which you are working. We typically offer different versions of GCC, so if you have a preference, you can customize your own tool chain. Just make your selections from the dropdowns. Again, TimeSys maintains older tool chains, ensuring build repeatability. If I want to know more about a tool chain component, I can click on the link to bring up the information window where I'll see a brief description, version, revision number, license information, and so much more. I'll go ahead and complete this step by selecting a small footprint UC Libc library.
Once I have a tool chain selected, I can navigate to packages and choose my APIs. As I mentioned earlier, you have access to more than 1,000 packages in the Linux Link repository. You can see that TimeSys has made package selection easy. In a simple table layout, you'll find version and license information, and you'll see that packages are organized by category. So if you know the category, you can select your required packages from within. I'll go ahead and select BusyBox. I know it's a system package, so I'll scroll down the list and select it. Notice in the right-hand column, the thumbs-up icon is displayed. This means that BusyBox is a TimeSys recommended package. If I click on the BusyBox name, the information window will load. Within the information window, I see a description of the package, as well as the license information, and also a link to where this package came from. Now let's say I need a package but don't know the package name. I could use the Smart Search feature and type in what I do know. I'll go ahead and search using SSH. You can see that Smart Search has found results for SSH in four of the categories. Looking under Networking, I find OpenSSH, which I'll select. Before I go ahead and select OpenSSH, watch what happens here in the left column. Did you see it? When I selected OpenSSH, the TimeSys factory dynamically found all dependencies and automatically selected them for me. This is where TimeSys makes it easy for you. All you have to know is which packages or APIs your application is using and select those items. The factory build engine will identify all cross dependencies and it will also identify conflicts, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So you'll have a complete root file system in the output. If you have a Linux Link subscription, you'll have the added benefit of being able to modify the configuration of a package. By clicking on the Build Options icon, I am presented with a window where I can make my edits. For the purpose of this demo, however, I'll leave it as is. Before I leave the networking category, I'm going to go ahead and select Drop Bear. I'd like to use Smart Search one more time. This time I'm going to search for Qt. I'll go ahead and clear my original search and type in Qt. I know that the package I'm looking for is located under graphics, so I'll go ahead and select that. I see Qt embedded for Linux, which is the API that I need. I've selected everything I need and I'm ready for the next step. In the Build Output Options section, I can specify whether or not I want the kernel included in the root file system. I can also select different formatting approaches for the root file system, and I can select different root file system footprint optimization options. By default, these are all selected. And in this step, I have the option of selecting the specific binary file format for all the APIs that I've selected in my work order. So if you use RPM, Debian, or iPackage for internal use, Factory cannot put those file types for you. While making my selections in each of the previous steps, the Advice Engine has been looking at all my selections and it has returned advice recommendations. I can choose to accept these recommendations or I can choose to proceed with the selections as I've made them. As I mentioned earlier, the Advice Engine will make recommendations based on build and run dependency, and it also returns feedback that is based on logic dependency. For example, if it finds multiple packages providing the same functionality as it has in my case, it will make a recommendation. And lastly, we arrive at the work order summary. As I mentioned earlier, on this page, you can review your work order and make edits to any of the selections you've made. You have another opportunity to view the device drivers enabled and the kernel you've selected, and we supply another link to the kernel configuration file. You can also make last-minute inspections of toolchain components and packages. At the bottom of this page is where you'll find the approximate build time for your work order. It's important to remember that your entire work order is built from source, so it can take a while. Once you select build, the work order is then queued. 
Once your build is queued, it will run on time to servers, and once the build is done, the person who started it will receive an email with a link to download the files. So there you have it. Building your custom BSP and matching SDK is really this easy. So before I wrap things up, let's take a quick look at the build output download page. The email that you receive when your build is done will contain a link to this page. On this page, you'll find the download link to the Linux kernel binary image and a root file system, which are the components that make up a TimeSys defined board support package. You can deploy them on the reference platform by following the instructions link located above the download table. A little more than halfway down the table, you'll see a file that ends with .sh. This is the software development kit installer. When you download this file to your Linux host platform and install it, it will install the complete cross build system, the cross toolchain with all the libraries, the Linux kernel source tree, and a root file system so that you can start developing your application on day one. The build summary text file is the work order summary. A text file will be included with every work order that you design using Linux Link. The summary lists all the APIs and versions used in your board support package and matching software development kit, as well as licensing information so that you'll know what licensing schemes you have to acknowledge or follow in your product design. And there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this overview. Thanks so much for watching.